my Sterling single, making a special steam whistle. So you may be thinking, why am I making a special steam whistle? What's wrong with this one? Nothing at all. I bought this particular whistle from Blackgates Engineering. It's one of a range of whistles produced by a company called CME Engineering, which is run by Chris English, who's a friend of mine, and he really does make some excellent things. And this whistle is no exception, there's nothing wrong with it. It's five-eighths of an inch in diameter, which is a bit too long for this application, so I'm going to shorten it. A quick trip to the bandsaw, and now it looks like this. I fitted it into the lathe just to clean up the end, because the original plan was just to solder a new end on it. And once I cleaned up the end, I used a file on the outside, after which I used a deburring tool to do the inside. These deburring tools are really clever, you can see how they work. Once I performed this clean up though, I suddenly had a thought. Why not modify the whistle and make a resonance chamber? And that's just what I'm going to do. A resonance chamber is a large chamber attached to the end of a whistle and it makes it deeper and the tone of it changes considerably. I'm going to make the resonance chamber using a piece of brass. I didn't have a piece of tube the correct size or thickness, so a piece of brass will suffice, I've got plenty of this. I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise for the tone of my voice. I have a really bad head cold, possibly the worst one I've had for a while. In this clip I'm drilling the piece of brass using quite a large drill. The good thing about turning this component from the solid is that when I mount it, the end of the whistle, which is going to be mounted to a bracket, will be very strong. As I'm turning a thin tube, you will hear a harmonic resonance from the lathe tool. And I found that the lathe tool made a lot less noise if I cut in reverse like this, pulling away from the chuck. I think the tube is thin enough now, I don't want to make it too weak. This should resonate very well. It's resonating already. Because the whistle is going to be mounted out of the way under the foot plate, it really doesn't need much polishing up, but I can't resist it really, so I work down the grades of sandpaper. The final piece of sandpaper that I'm using is 400 grit. I parted off the resonator tube and now I'm working on the cap. This is going to fit in the end of the resonator tube, and once I've shortened the original whistle even further, I will solder that into this component. Before I part off this component, what I'm going to do is just drill the end of it like this to make it concave. And I'm going far too fast and it's really chattering. Here's a top tip. If you get this scenario where the drill is chattering, stop the lathe, feed in the drill and rotate the chuck by hand, then you stand a good chance of being able to remove the chatter marks. I didn't bother cleaning this up, it's fine as it is. And as the parting off comes to its inevitable conclusion, here is the part. And the chatter marks are quite beautiful. So why have I drilled this part like this? This is going to be soft soldered into the tube. And when the whistle's in use, I'm going to get some condensed water in there. And I need it to drain away immediately. And that's why I drilled the concave bit just to drain the whistle so it doesn't gurgle. I silver soldered the cap into the main resonator chamber. In this clip I'm using my micrometer just to check that this whistle is 5 eighths of an inch diameter, and it is. The part is now back in the chuck, and I'm drilling it with a 5 eighths drill. In this clip I'm taking some light facing cuts across the front to shorten the cap. Then I cut the whistle down to about an inch and a half. Then I soft soldered what was left of the whistle into this hole in the resonator chamber. In this clip I'm just testing it to see if it works before I solder it into the chamber. I'm shortening the original whistle even further. Here I'm just rounding the bottom edge of the resonator chamber so that the steam can pass freely across the lip of the whistle without hitting a square edge. After this I soft soldered the whistle into place, let's see if it works. I haven't got a good seal with the airline, but I can tell that this is going to be successful. In the next video I will show the mounting in great detail, because I need to be very economic with the space available. This is not a very big engine really, and some parts of it are very small. And until the next episode, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.